Okay, in this video, I'd like to talk about the Schrodinger equation, and I'm going to suggest a, a proof of how Erwin Schrodinger came up with this. Now, just to quickly describe it, the Schrodinger equation is the wave equation for matter. It was, well, I suppose, come up with in, in 1926. Since then, it has proven excellent. I don't think any changes have been made to it since, and it's fit experimental evidence each time. So, this is, let's say, the, one of the fundamental equations in quantum physics. And there are a couple of things I'd like to talk about before I will say give you your, the proof of the Schrodinger equation. The first one is I'd like to write it down, and the Schrodinger equation looks something like this: minus h bar squared over two m times del two psi of x of t del x squared plus v zero times psi of x of t is equal to iota times h bar times del so, or not del 2, excuse me, del psi of x of t, del t. Now I'm going to quickly explain the components here. I'm sure you know this, but I'll explain them all the same. This, this constant here, h bar squared, is equal to Planck's constant h over 2 pi. Well, of course, squared. Okay, so uh, h bar is equal to Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. The next thing is my wave function. Alright, now I'm not going to go into what wave functions are. I'm going to assume at this stage you know what a wave function is. So I'm saying that capital Psi, okay, that's capital, the Greek letter capital Psi. And this is the total wave function, so it's both the spatial and temporal components. So of course it's a function of both position and time. Now in this case, I'm only talking about a one-dimensional spatial coordinate. Of course you can generalize this through three dimensions in space very easily. And this time we're getting the second derivative with respect to our spatial coordinate of our wave function. The next thing we have here is this V0 component. V0 is a potential energy term. Now, if your if your will say matter is moving in a potential or in a potential energy field or some sort of force field, like it might be moving in a, um, a you know between in a, a potential difference of some sort, well then there has a potential energy associated with it, and this V zero term allows you to add uh, will allows you to take account of that. The next thing here is of course we the iota, which donates the fact that we're talking about a complex number, and we just have the the time derivative of our total wave function psi of x of t. And that's what our Schrodinger equation looks like. Okay. Now the next thing is, I'd like to talk about something called a Hamiltonian. All right. A Hamiltonian is something, and it given it's given that that symbol. A Hamiltonian is something which describes all the energies in the, in a system. All right. Now a system, of course, can have many different types of energy. The two most common and most important components, however, are your kinetic energies and your potential energies. And you can always have smaller terms, right? And we're going to call that my Hamiltonian, named after the Irish mathematician Hamilton. So, this is that's what a Hamiltonian is. And, in general, Ham, the, the Hamiltonian that we're going to be talking about is going to be equal to p squared over, uh, it's not going to be equal to p squared over 2m, that's, that's incorrect. It's going to be equal to um, h bar squared k squared over 2m plus v0. Now if you've done a small bit of manipulation of formulae, it, it, perhaps in a modern physics course or something like that, you'll realize here that, well you know of course that the momentum p is equal to h bar times k, and therefore what we have is p squared over 2m, which we should know is equal to half mv squared, which is our kinetic energy. So this is just another way of writing our kinetic energy, taking into, the fact, into account the fact that we're talking about waves, where k is the uh, is the wave, well, the wave number. So it's just another way of writing a kinetic energy. Now the thing is about a Hamiltonian is that it is an operator. And you might be saying, oh my god, I've heard people say operators in the past and they, they really scare me. What is an operator? I'm going to tell you that you know plenty of operators already. This symbol here is an operator. That is the addition operator. If you apply it between two numbers, it will give you the sum of the two numbers. This is your subtraction operator, it will give you the difference of your two numbers. This is your multiplication operator, your division operator. What about this one? This operator gives you a differential. This operator gives an integral. So if you apply, for example, this operator here to a function, for example x squared, it will give you the integral of your function x squared. If you, do, if you apply your, your differential operator to a function, we'll say x, and you, you, you will say do um, we'll get a d dy, then you're going to get the y derivative of your function x. So the point is here that operators are something we're familiar with, 
However, we don't often call them operators. And this Hamiltonian is no different. Is no different. It is an operator which, when applied to something, will tell you all the, the energy components of your, your system. Now the thing is, of course, that while, just like the addition, subtraction, the differential operators, none of these make any sense on their own. For example, you could never see these on their own. They make no sense. For the same reason, a Hamiltonian must operate on something in order for it to make any physical sense. Alright? So, for example, if you were to write the following, if you were to write the Hamiltonian on my wave function, that means the Hamiltonian operates on the wave function and gives you, in this case, your potential and kinetic energy terms of your wave function or your system. Alright, so must operate on something. And how to operate on it is literally mean, it means you literally multiplying the components. So that's why I would literally write h times psi. It's very straightforward. Alright, so that's how your that's how your operator that's how your operator works. Now there is one more thing I'd like to discuss in it that's kind of similar. It's the concept of eigenfunctions and eigenvectors. And this is another thing that quantum physics uses a lot, and there's no need to get bogged down on these things because they're very straightforward. The, the uh, set of eigenfunctions and vectors we use most often is the following. h times psi is equal to e times psi. Now that's actually what the Schrodinger equation gives you. It says the Hamiltonian operating on the wave function will give you an energy back times the wave function. Now first your linear algebra will tell you all about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So let's say, let's, let's write this in another way. I think eigenvalues were given as lambda and I don't know, capital A. So you might read this, you might say well the, eigenval the eigenvalues are lambda. It's the same as saying if you operate on something it's this, or you do, if you do something, let's say in this case you operate my Hamiltonian on my wave function, it's the same thing as multiplying my wave function by a constant, which are called my eigenvalues. Alright? They are my eigenvalues. And as a result, the function, the function for which this works, whereby if you apply, uh, you, you apply an operator on the function and you get back an eigenvalue times the function, that's called an eigen vector. You could also call it an eigenfunction. Alright, that's the same thing there. So there's no need, no need to get lost in that. So I think it's time now to go straight into the, 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 the derivation of the Schrodinger equation. Alright, so bear with me one moment. The first thing I'm going to do is define a wave function. So the wave function I'm going to use is the following. It's going to be uh, psi of x of t I'm going to apply now, uh, excuse me, imply from now on that I'm talking about x and t. And it's going to be the complex exponential of kx minus omega t. Alright? Now, for reasons I'm not going to explain, uh, you're going to try and get derivatives of this. And I'm just going to write the derivatives straight out. So, psi sub, psi sub t is the first derivative of psi with respect to, to time. And in this case, it's going to be negative iota times omega times the wave function. Okay, so you're just going to get the wave function back multiplied by the prefactor negative iota times omega. Omega is, of course, the angular frequency. Then the first derivative with respect to x is going to be equal to iota times k times psi. And in the corner, I'm going to write, I'm going to actually get rid of this altogether. It's just taking up room. And the second derivative with respect to x of my wave function is going to be equal to negative k squared times psi. So you should, you should notice, of course, here that we're getting, as we, as we will say, differentiate our function, we're getting the function back multiplied by a prefactor. And you have seen something like this in the past, and cosines and sines do the same thing. Okay? The prefactor, of course, in that case, being a, a negative sign. Anyway, so let's, let's see what our Hamiltonian looks like operating on, the, operating on a wave function. So I know that my Hamiltonian, my Hamiltonian says h bar omega is equal to h bar squared k squared over 2m plus v0. That's my Hamiltonian. By the way, this is the energy, E is equal to h bar omega. That's something that shouldn't be, any, that shouldn't be new to you. So let's see what happens if I apply my Hamiltonian, my Hamiltonian on psi. I told you how to do this. You just put in your wave function. Like that. Alright? Now, for other reasons, which to be honest I don't really understand, I suppose this was just Schrodinger's, um, Schrodinger's insight, he said that he wanted to turn this into a differential equation. So he wanted to be able to use the derivatives of the wave function in this Hamiltonian equation here. So, 
The derivatives he decided to look at obviously were the second derivative with respect to x, the first derivative with respect to x, and time. And basically what he tried to do was as follows. He wanted to say, he tried to say, well, what value, what do I need to multiply the second derivative of my wave function in order to get, in order to get, um, in order to get h bar squared k squared over 2m. That's the first thing he asked himself. Then he, said, then he said, what do I need to multiply my first derivative of my wave function with respect to t by in order to get h bar omega? Alright, so he wanted to get equivalent, he wanted to get equivalent uh, expressions. So in other words, he just wanted to use these differentials in here. And obviously he needed to find out the, uh, the prefactors or, you know, how, how to convert these things. So let's go ahead and do that. It's very straightforward stuff. The first thing to note, of course, is that psi sub t is equal to negative iota times omega times psi. And out of this, we're trying to get h bar omega. We need to get h bar omega times psi. Okay? So how do we go about doing this? Well, the first thing we do is this. We say, let's, let's get what the wave function is. So psi sub t over negative i times omega is equal to the wave function. All right? And look, we're, looking, we're, we're trying to get what h bar omega times psi is. Okay, so we now have what psi is in terms of, in terms of the first derivative with respect to t. Now, notice this. If you have 1 over negative iota, that's 2 times iota, negative iota, what if I multiply above and below by iota? You're going to get, of course, negative, t negative 1 over iota. So you're just going to get uh, iota on top. All right, so it's like bringing it, up, uh, bringing it above or below the line and changing its sign. So what I'm going to do here is the same thing. I'm going to put iota on the top. So now I have iota times psi sub t. Notice, of course, the sign changes as a result. And I want to get rid of my omega. So I'm going to multiply above and below by omega. Or just we'll say I'm going to bring my omega up here. So I'm going to have psi up here like this. All right. And now see we have omega times psi is equal to something else over here. And the next thing we need to do, of course, is to bring in our Planck's constant. That's actually h bar omega. So we have h bar and h bar like that. So we now realize that if we multiply, if we multiply our first derivative with respect to time of our wave function by i times h bar, we'll get, we'll get h bar omega times psi. That's the first thing. All right? And you note that down in your copy book if you like. The next thing is, if we look at the second derivative with respect to x. So the second derivative is this. And what we want is to find out, we want to find out h bar squared k squared over 2m times psi. So the first thing is we find out what psi is equal to. But psi clearly, of course, is equal to psi sub x x over negative k squared, like so. All right. The next thing we need to do, of course, is multiply by our, pre by, by our factor. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to multiply by h bar squared, k squared over 2m, like this. All right, we're doing pretty well. And if you just do our cancellations here, you're going to find a negative h bar squared over 2m times psi sub xx is equal to h bar squared, k squared over 2m times psi. So now we've found all our prefactors. So it's a very simple case of just putting in, putting these back into our Hamiltonian equation. So we found here, for example, that this is the same as i times h bar d psi dt. So I'm going to put that in. So this is going to be um, i times h bar del psi del t is equal to, uh, we're going to have h bar squared k squared over 2m times, uh, this is going to be equal to, no, I take that back, that's incorrect, what am I doing? The prefactor we have here was negative h bar squared over 2m times del 2 psi del x squared plus v0 psi. And if you still following, you realize that, of course, that is the Schrodinger equation. So that wasn't too bad. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.